Hi, Puppy Turtle. All right. I've had it. Okay? Whatever stick is up your ass, you better remove it. Here we go. Warning, the following video may provide evidence supporting truths that you don't want to admit to yourself. Viewer discretion is advised. No, Puppy Turtle, there's truths out there that you don't want to accept. Don't worry, I'm going to help you out in this video. One of the biggest myths that contributes to the large number of deconversions in the modern era is the idea that homosexuality is the unpardonable sin that if you like individuals of the same gender as you, then the kingdom of God is sealed off to you forever. <clears throat> now, Puppy Turtle, if you want to talk about the New Testament, you're kind of right that there's not really a passage that says homosexuality is wrong, but the verse in... Um, in Romans uh, 1, uh, 21 through the rest, people interpret that as homosexuality, even though that there isn't a proper word to mean homosexuality, they, they, they translate the, Sol the Solomites to mean that. But um, in the Old Testament, there's actually two verses which are used to clobber us homosexuals over the head. And that is Leviticus 18.22 and Leviticus 20.13. Uh, and if you want to argue that it's Old Testament, I want to remind you of Matthew 5.17-19 through 19, where the character Jesus is saying that uh, none of the old laws shall pass at all, not one jolt nor one tittle shall change from the old laws. Whenever Christianity and homosexuality are brought up in the same sentence, uh, the concept that Christians are evil, vindictive, homophobic, and hateful, and blindly go around slaughtering homosexuals in the name of their God, is essentially what's brought to the minds of anybody with no education on the issue whatsoever, and that includes 100% of non-Christians. 100% of non-Christians. Puppy Turtle, I would like you to sit there and fucking think for a minute. Seriously. Kid. 100% of non-Christians think that? Hello, Darnak, open homosexual and open atheist that interacts with Christians. If I thought that, why would I interact with Christians? Huh? Why would I interact with Rational Roundtable? Why would I interact with Lasoyo? Why would I interact with you? Why would I interact with V-Rod? Why would I interact with Thunderbolt 94? Why would I interact with other Christians or other theists if I really thought that? Like I said at the beginning of the video, kid, Take that stick that's up your ass and remove it. And I don't care that you're 16 years old. You need to hear this. And everything else that I'm going to say to you in this video. I'm not even going to acknowledge the existence of the Westboro Baptist Church in this video, except when I did just right there. The reason being because I don't believe we should be the troll. I'm not going to deny that shock of God... Crazy 316, Nephilim Free, and especially God Guns Guts Glory, are homophobic and use the Bible to justify it. I think Nephilim Free is to a much lesser extent than those other guys, though. It's good of you to admit that. You see, that's the type of bigotry that I fight. And it's not just bigotry from theists. It's bigotry from anybody and anybody that, that chooses to be a bigot. You see, I've met non-believers who are atheists that are homophobic. I even met a gay, a white gay man that was a racist 
and I fought against him. You see, I fight bigotry wherever I see it. And I will engage with people who are nice people, regardless of their religious beliefs or not, regardless of the color of their skin or not. It, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is the type of person you are and how you treat other people. I happen to know that Shock of God uh, has professed that in the event a homosexual were to hit on him, he would beat them to death. I mean, it, the documentation is in Lepad's video on Shock. Now, I don't actually believe for a moment that Shock of God would really kill a homosexual if they hit on him in a state park. Namely, because I think even if he tried, he couldn't. But I don't think he would try. I think he was largely saying that for effect. Nonetheless, I believe it to be desperately misguided. I believe it to be a gross misunderstanding of Yahweh's motivations when he banned homosexuality and adultery in the Old Testament and when he uh, declared it to still be a sin in the New Testament. Now, Puppy Turtle, I realize that you're coming at the Bible from a Christian perspective. I'm coming at it from a secular perspective. The Bible, as far as we can tell, has been written, rewritten, re-edited, torn apart and re-edited again by humans. There is really no evidence that points to a deity actually constructing any part of the Bible, the Old Testament or the New Testament. And as people writing something down you have to remember the cultural context of 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 when and how it was written in that area of Canaan uh, homosexuality was looked down upon well in some sections of Canaan not all but there were sections where it was looked down upon now what I'm going to do is save the scriptural passage until later. Right now, we're going to do a thought experiment. All right, you have erected the nation of Israel. You're Yahweh. You have erected the nation of Israel. Now, you have to keep them alive. You must, must keep them alive. You do not have a margin of error because if that nation is killed, then there is no way any human being can ever have redemption and avoid eternal damnation. This is not a trivial matter. Now, uh, one of the many things you want to do is help to prevent disease. And one of the major sources of serious disease and serious disease epidemics is STDs. So what is the logical thing to do? minimize the amount of sex that they have and therefore minimize the number of STDs they pass on. But you need to do it in such a way that will allow them to breed enough to sustain the population. The obvious solution here is to command them to split off into breeding pairs and otherwise abstain from all sexual activity. Notice that homosexuality didn't even come into mention in that thought experiment, did it? Wow. Here's a thought experiment for you, Puppy Turtle. If you are a divine being, if you're Yahweh and you created the heavens and the earth, and you chose one small group of people out of everybody else that's on the planet for some odd reason, because we have records of societies being around uh, tens of thousands of years before um, before Canaan and uh, before the supposed Israelites were around. Um, why don't you just eliminate STDs? You know, you're the divine creator of the universe and earth and humans. Why not just get rid of STDs or m more precisely 
why even invent STDs? Now, this is, of course, unfortunate, uh, this breeding pair policy for those who do not like to have the kind of sex that can bring forth offspring, but instead prefer other kinds of sex. But, frankly, it sucks to be them. It's not that big of a deal. I don't see why them having to die a virgin is the worst thing that could possibly happen. And this is one of the reasons why I keep calling you a kid, kid. Uh, when you get laid, finally, you know, like, your your whole thought pattern on sex is going to change. It, it, it changes with damn near everybody that gets laid. You know, sex is a very enjoyable thing. You, you can have a lot of fun with it. And it's more than just engaging in intercourse. There's a lot of ways of exploring the human body in a very sensual, sexual way that people enjoy. And why should they stop doing that? Hmm? Just wondering. Why should we stop enjoying what we actually enjoy doing? Um, I will admit that people should be using protection when they're going out and having sex. But why? Why should we deny something that we've gotten through evolution that doesn't show any evidence that it was from a divine being. Hmm? Now, this is a tragedy. This is a very unfortunate turn of events. But it's a serious enough issue that it's unfortunately necessary. So, we've established a completely innocuous reason why homosexuality is forbidden in the Old Testament, but why is it still forbidden today? No, you haven't. What you're doing, or what you're trying to do, is play apologetics with the Bible and your religion. Uh, the concept of STDs was not around in that time period. In fact, the concept of S STDs have been around for less than 200 years. Puppy Turtle, you're not good at apologetics. You really are not, and people have been trying to point this out to you. You, s you are better at science than you are at apologetics. And I suggest that you continue with the science part and leave apologetics behind because all that you're doing is making an ass of out, out of yourself. Well, for exactly the same reason. It's now less urgent, so we're no longer commanded to execute them. And as a result of most countries having not just homosexuality, this applies to all sex outside of marriage. This applies to any example where you don't have the breeding pair type policy. I mean, do you really think that it's just chance that in Africa all of the AIDS epidemics are going on? I'm sorry, this is not out of hatred, but it is absolutely because they breed like rabbits. Are you fucking kidding me, kid? Seriously, are, are, are you kidding me? Yes, that was a... Uh not really a bigoted thing that you said but it was an assholey thing that that you just fucking said okay how about the utter lack of education that most of Africa gets you know how about that there are Christian organizations over there that are saying that condoms don't work i.e. the Pope and a few other groups what about them do you know that it's been drilled into most people in Africa that condoms don't work? That sexual education is not taught to them? That's why there is such a rampant degrees of AIDS spread over there because they're not fucking educated. And they're not educated because, because solely of most religious people that go over there pick up their Bible and go, all right then, all right then, we gonna learn the good word of God. Oh, don't, don't, don't be using them their condoms there. They don't work. Uh-uh. In fact, they spread AIDS. Yeah, that's what's been told to them. They've had this shoved down their throats and actual science and actual education 
removed or not taught or misinformation widely spread. You have a lot to fucking learn, kid. You really do. Mark my words. If Africa or any of the countries anywhere that had AIDS epidemics and AIDS problems instituted policies forcing people into breeding pairs and not allowing extramarital sex, they would not have AIDS epidemics anymore. That's totalitarianism, Poppy Turtle. You want to enforce your own thoughts of how people should breed in a country like that or anywhere no it won't work you want to know why because it's been tried over and over and over again and each time it's failed I want you to get this through through your head okay it doesn't matter if you like it or not people are gonna fuck why because we are a very sexual species the best way to prevent and to stop the spread of STDs is sexual education and treatment of those people that are infected that is proven to be the best way to stop spreading STDs and yes puppy turtle I am aware that there are people that are still going to fuck without using protection and knowing that they are infected with a disease I'm not that arrogant I am pointing out the best way that we have so far of preventing STD spreadage is to educate people do me a favor look up in the United States uh, back in the mid 80s to early 90s when there was a push in the United States schools to teach sex education you're gonna see an interesting correlation and that is that is the dropage of, of of the overall percentage of the spreading of STDs and this and unwanted pregnancies. Why? Because people were educated about their own body, about their own makeup, about STDs, about what STDs do to the body, and they were educated on how to stop it. That kind of thought pattern that you have right now, I, I, I realize that you're only 16 and that you don't have a whole lot of life experience. Don't worry, you'll get there later, but you need to fucking change that shit. Seriously. One way to do it, go out and get fucking laid, but use protection. I'm not saying that AIDS is God's judgment or God's punishment for sexual immorality. Rather, AIDS is the reason that sexual immorality is immoral. AIDS and diseases like it. AIDS and STDs is the reason why premarital sex is immoral. Did you actually think about that before you actually said it? I'm aware that you write a script out before you actually you know make your videos or something along those lines but did you really think about that just wondering did you because that makes no fucking sense whatsoever and I would like you to go back to that part of your video and listen to it again does this mean that Yahweh is bigoted against homosexuals Obviously not. Uh, his feelings about homosexuality, about homosexuals, did not enter into the equation. Obviously, Yahweh is an infinitely loving being. Therefore, it's logically impossible that he should hate homosexuals. Infinite loving being. How is something infinite loving love like hate good like evil 
are all abstract concepts created by humans and they mean different things to different people how is something all of something that is that is an abstract concept do me a favor puppy turtle stop watching William Wayne Craig seriously he, he he's he, he's really like rotting your brain cuz i'm pretty sure that you got that from him now i can't help but notice that this is a strong minority position amongst christians in america in fact a lot of the atheists on youtube were apparently deconverted from christianity because they faced discrimination for their sexual orientation and that's wrong the reason that it's wrong isn't because it's a failure to compromise, it's because it's an example of missing the point. Okay, Puppy Turtle, you are missing the point. You really are. You just said a lot of atheists on YouTube deconvert it because of their, their sexuality and how they are treated for it. You're wrong. Have you not been paying attention to the deconversion stories here on YouTube? The greater majority of all of them are heterosexuals that, like me, have looked at religion, all of the religions, and looked at their claims and have come to the conclusion that they're utter bullshit. My deconversion from Christianity had nothing to do with my sexuality. In fact, in fact, the church that I actually went to supported homosexuals, very much so. My deconversion came about by actually looking at the supposed evidence for a deity and finding that it doesn't hold any water. Poppy Turtle? I want you to go back and reread or rewatch that section also. And I want you to go back and actually listen to the deconversion stories that are here on YouTube. Yes, you will find a few that will say that that because they were uh, they were discriminated against because of their their sexuality is why they left their religion. But it's not a lot. It's not most. When I watched Miss Science for the Wind's video on her deconversion story, which was largely because she was not accepted in the Christian communities she grew up in due to her sexual orientation, my thoughts can be summed up as, you're doing it wrong. It took me some time to find her her channel. I actually had to go through your channel to find hers. Hers, because it's not spelled out for the when. It's spelled out FTW. MS Science FTW. And I went through her, her video list. She doesn't have a lot of videos out. Uh, and I found the video that you're talking about. Uh, in no point in that video did did she say that she left Christianity because of that. It may have been a factor, but she did say that she started learning about actual science and learned that homosexuality is actually natural, and it's found within the natural world. You need to go back and rewatch that video, kid. You really do. See, the problem we have is in approach. We're approaching homosexuality by just telling people that we think it's wrong. They already knew that, and they already thought less of us for it. No, Puppy Turtle, we're told that it's wrong. We're told that we're dirty and we're disgusting and that we're not natural. You know, that's what Miss Science Fiction's video was actually about. She was depressed 
because people around her was telling her her that her own feelings that she had towards the same sex was wrong and through her study of science she found that it wasn't that she was normal this has been drilled into people that if you are homosexual and that you have homosexual feelings that you are wrong that you are dirty that you don't deserve to live that is where we get it from you have people like me that that have gone through the emotions that have gone through the bigotry that know that we are not wrong that we are not dirty we know that that we are normal and that we are natural that is the problem is outside forces telling us that we are wrong it is propagated mostly mostly from from religious people but there are non-religious people that do propagate the same bullshit what we need to do is explain to them why it's wrong no what you need to do is shut the fuck up on this issue kid because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about because as a voluntarist, the typical definition of my moral beliefs is that God's arbitrary commands are the source of objective morality. But I actually don't think that's the case, because I think Yahweh puts a great deal of consideration into what he chooses to make a significant enough offense to evoke eternal damnation as a punishment. Puppy Turtle, when you or any other theist finally proves that your deity exists, I still would not believe in objective morality. What I would see would be another uh, entity that has more knowledge and more awareness than we are telling us what the fuck to do. It would then be a subjective morality pushed on us and people going to a place for eternal torture that sickens me that sickens me on so many levels that I'm not even going to go into and there is therefore going to be obvious logical reasons behind every command ever given at the time when homosexuality was a capital offense in the Old Testament, they couldn't have possibly known about sexually transmitted diseases. And why did your God not uh, tell the Israelites about STDs, puppy turtle? Hmm? But Yahweh apparently did because he instituted policies whose only conceivable purpose can be to protect against them. That's actually a good example of biblical foreknowledge. As I said before, Poppy Turtle, you're not good at this apologetic shit. You really are not. A good example of biblical foreknowledge? No, a good example of biblical foreknowledge would have been an explanation of what STDs actually are and how they're transmitted. That would have been something. But to try to derive out, out of of an ancient text that has been re-edited, rewritten, torn apart, rewritten over and over again and saying, God done knew it. See, this is why he it says not to have sex outside of marriage. No, Puppy Turtle. People in that time era were trying to control other people. That plain and simple. The society in which those texts were written was very, uh, very confined. And they believed in things which are not believed in now. The Bible has no foreknowledge on the scientific advancements that we have made in the past 150 years. As much as you want to try to twist and drive and whim lang Craig it, it just ain't there. So, you don't try to cure them of their homosexuality. It's not a neurological disorder. 
they have, and it's not solely something they elect into. Both of these views are wrong. It is a genetic trait just as much as skin color or anything else. What you want to do is entirely genetic, but what you actually do is a matter of free will just as much as anything else. Are you sure that you are keeping up on the scientific studies that are going on about sexuality within our species and other species on this planet? Because more and more it's not coming out to be genetic. It's coming out to be more chemical than anything else. It's not a trait that is passed on from, uh, from parents to child. Puppy Turtle, seriously, do not touch this subject again until you learn more about it, because I'm not going to be the only one handing you your ass on this. In conclusion, God does not hate homosexuals, and Christians who condemn homosexuality without remembering to mention why, or do so in a hateful fashion, are detrimental to the cause. And none of you have actually proven um, that can be scientifically uh, verified and repeated that your deity actually exists. The issue is simply that Yahweh cares less about their sexual desires and general horniness than he does about the well-being of the human species, and particularly about salvation. You have alluded over and over and over in this video that you seem to know what your deity actually thinks about sexuality in general, either it be heterosexuality or homosexuality, or just people engaging in, in sex itself. Would you like to explain how you know that? Would you care to explain um, why you are right and people like Shock of God, Crazy 316, and 4G are wrong? Now to brace for the subscriber count loss that I'm going to face because it's extremely homophobic to tell Christians that they need to be more loving and sympathetic when dealing with homosexuals. No, the thing, the reason why you're losing subscribers, Pup, Puppy Turtle, is not because you're telling Christians to be uh, loving towards homosexuals, which is a nice gesture on your part, and thank you for that. But it's because of videos like this, where you ramble on on topics that you don't know anything about, and that you don't listen to the other side like your video about atheist, which I didn't touch because I didn't have time to go through it. Oh, but I so want to after dealing with this one. I probably won't, but who knows. Uh, you need to seriously stop and listen to what people are saying. You need to actually learn more about the real world. You need to spend a few years, get out of your teen years, experience life, and actually engage with other people outside of your circles. Your, you being as young as you are has not afforded you the experience that other people have. And it's one of the reasons why I went actually kind of easy on you in this video. This is going to be my only warning to you. You put out another video like this, and I will not hold back on you at all. Zero. Puppy Turtle, I have been following you since you first showed up on YouTube and when you were a creationist. I even shouted you out for not leaving creationism, but for actually examining the actual real scientific data that is out there. And I'm asking you to please go research these topics that you're talking about. Please listen to the other people that have been through what you are trying to talk about. That will help you out a lot. 
Until next time, take care.